Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Alright, Happy New Year. Um, I'm excited to do this video. So, I, I decided that I was going to shoot a video today, and I went to my most recent, um, it was the second to most recent uh, book artist spotlight, and uh, this was recommended. I didn't know Alex Alice's work, and I'd never seen this book before, and it is really, really good. So, if you haven't seen this artist or don't know the book settle in because this is great great stuff so thank you for the recommendation and um let's just get right into it so um i know nothing about alex alice in fact i wasn't even sure i almost thought that he was referring to like an artist named alex and that they had he had done a book on alice in wonderland and i was i googled them and i was like oh, okay this this stuff looks pretty cool and um, then when I started looking at um, some actual like sequential work, I was like, damn, this stuff is great. So um, we're going to try to go in order. Uh, and this is the cover. The cover is pretty calm compared to what you're going to see inside. Uh, there's a lot of mood in the book. And um, you'll see there's some treats at the end of this. Um, so pretty little, I don't know what you call it, like the inside of the book thing. Okay. We're gonna go in order. Um, okay, so yeah, so this is moving into the story. It, it's interesting too because European graphic novels, and I, I wonder if Europeans feel this way about American comics. There's a certain like vibe and and a certain aesthetic that I see in some European graphic novels. Not all, to be clear, um, but there's there's this like a, like a certain approach to the art that um, is somewhat consistent. Like there's a chunk of it that definitely is. And Alex's work falls into that that sort of history of of storytelling. And it's really interesting to see each person's like spin on it. Um, and uh, how how they weave a tale through it. But it's a nice page. Alright, so let's see. Look at this. I it was funny looking at this, I was like, Kelsey's gonna love this shit. <laughs> Kelsey and I were going to do a live stream today, but he's busy finishing a, a few loose ends for work, and we decided to just pick it up on Sunday. But um, we'll both have new art to show you on Sunday. I'm finishing something that I'm going to upload to Patreon probably tonight. So I've got a, I've got a new Blaster Kid piece done, which I think you guys will, will um, dig. So um, yeah, if you're on Patreon, get ready, because it's coming tonight. Uh, all right, so trees. Trees and snow and lightning some fancy vines here this starts out pretty mellow all things considered like there's nothing like like it's very well done but nothing that like will grab your attention and go wow this is like something i've never seen before but wait wait till we get into some of the double page spreads coming up uh, and you'll be really really impressed this stuff is all great man that horse is awesome so yeah, it looked like he, he had at least three graphic novel series that he had done, and um, they all looked really good. I'm going to shut this. Uh, yeah, they were all really, really nice, and this guy is seriously um, solid. This is all really nice. Man. I'm always so impressed by people that can draw this good. Look at that. That's really cool. It's really, it's like an amazing skill to develop. This looks hand colored too, which is pretty crazy. At least for American, American comic artists. <laughs> Man, that lighting on his face is badass. This is great right here. Man, that is really cool. Beautiful, beautiful colors. All right, continue. I'm telling you, wait, wait a second. Wait till it gets into the action. You're going to freak out. You're going to freak the freak out. Look at that. Who's that? Thor? Odin? Someone else? Chuck? Maybe his name is Chuck. It's possible. It's not an intimidating name. And you know what? I'll go back to hairstyles. Hairstyles are so huge. It's it's one of the it's so interesting. And I've mentioned this in other videos. Kind of got Mignola sort of hands here. Um, 
it is absolutely incredible. Like I draw, I've always been able to draw hair pretty good. So it's not, hair isn't hard for me to draw. Picking hairstyles for characters is hard because it really, really changes the mood and sort of attitude of a character. And uh, man, it's absolutely crazy that like that can be such a, uh, a huge, you know, it's like, it's either a win or it's a loss, honestly. I don't think there's much middle ground with it. And, you know, depending on your character, you know, they're going to wear their hair a certain way and have, um, uh, like, how they maintain it, you know? Like, do they give a shit about their hair? It sounds weird, but I'm telling you, it's an important part of the costume, we'll call it. So this is a little look game Game of Thrones. I didn't really watch Game of Thrones, but um, I saw I think part of the first issue episode. Sorry, I remember it was in the snow with like creepy guys. It looked good. I just don't have time to watch TV. People are like, you didn't watch the greatest series of all time, Rich. Hate you. It's all right hate away all right so we're gonna get into some crazy double page spreads here in one second so this is called Siegfried it's an interesting name for the book because it brings to mind different aesthetics to me than um, the content here honestly uh, names are important too you know I don't know how old of a name Siegfried is. That's the. It's kind of fun when you're actually creating a book. Um, to, uh, uh, you know, you have to place things in a time and space, and um, uh, you know, have it fit. You know, be something that's like worthwhile uh, for that world. Ah, this is cool. I like the lettering. It's actually nice. I'm not a huge fan of this amount of space on this word balloon. Like, this is a little overkill. Um, but I've gotten more picky. I think these look really nice. But this is, it's a little too, there's a little too, I, the roundness is kind of killing me too. Um, I am picky about lettering now. I didn't used to be. But the more that I've been writing and drawing, it, it is something that I really take seriously. And it's it's part of the art, honestly, you know, and part of the attitude, I think if you if you were reading the story, these word balloons might like it reminds me of like a video game where um like in Zelda whoop, I pictured like a noise and like his his comments are um almost like a pop up quick. But who knows, maybe you feel totally different about it. That's okay, that's what art is all about. Art and storytelling. We got fire, we got crystals. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, this is weird. There's a lot of space on these word balloons. It could be, it's very high likelihood that it was translated, and maybe this is to cover up word balloons. I don't know. This looks like it's in the art. Like, this does. But the lettering looks like a font. These look hand drawn. They could be paste ups with the digital font. Oh, the coloring on that is great. Really, really nice. Man, I love that stroke right there. Really, really beautiful. All right. Here we go. We're getting into some of the crazy stuff. How many of you have seen this book? I'd never even heard of it, to be honest. Oh, this is cool. Kind of Pan's Labyrinth-ish. Definitely going to follow. If this guy is on Instagram, I'm going to give him a follow because uh, this is some cool shit. This is nice. And this is actually quite panel heavy. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10 panels. It's interesting too is someone commented on um, my panel layout for one of the Buster Kid pages and um, 
sometimes, in my opinion, what ends up happening is there's a chunk of activity that's going on sort of simultaneously, and you can you can read it any way. So, like, when you are coming through here, I'm not saying it's the exact circumstances of this page, but it'll, it'll make my point. Is So you've got, like, a big shot like this. Then you move here, and, you know, as a reader, you might go, well, am I supposed to go here? Am I supposed to go here? Do I go from down here, up here? Sometimes it doesn't matter. Like you can, you could, you could take it this way. Obviously it's going to lead you in an odd direction, but, but, um, you know, or you could take in all four of these panels sort of at once, meaning that it's sort of like the, the moment happens quickly. So I, I'm not super militant on, on things like that. I, I mean, I mean, definitely remember when I was first started collecting comics, I would get confused though, reading them sometimes and not know where I was supposed to go next. I don't think that that's a great thing, but you know, oh, see, here we go. This is what I was talking about the spreads. Um, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things where, where, um, you know, you just want to be mindful of it. No page is going to sort of make or break a comic, to be honest. It's it's really an accumulation of all the, the stuff together. As long as you've got more win than loss, you should be good to go. But this is beautiful. Look at how cool this is. He's got a few spreads like this in the book. It was really interesting when I was kind of browsing through it. It was, it was really cool to see him open up and do these really really wild things because up to this point we've had kind of some unusual like mystery a lot of mysterious mysterious stuff going on people who are more in shadow than than um fully exposed here we start to get more fully exposed um character development visually uh, and i think that um it's nice it engages the viewer too much shadow can be, I think, it, you feel like you're on the outside of the story. And I, I use a lot of black in my stuff, as probably most of you know. So, trust me, it's it's something that I have to be very careful of, too. Because it's, like, people want to see what's going on. They want to use their imagination. This is great. Um, this is really cool. Yeah, you got to have a pretty good balance of it. We'll just we'll actually let's we'll just go we'll go in reverse order. So at the at the end of the first chapter of the collected edition of it, um, he's got this really really interesting like sketchbook and almost like um, I'm I'm wondering if at some point this was turned into an animation or something like that. Maybe people that know um, more about this. Again, this is my first time seeing this stuff this morning. What what the the um scenario is behind this but you'll see some really interesting thing there's an arthur rackham piece which i assume is an inspiration but check this out some really nice like um kind of cartoony character designs the stuff of dreams this section is called really really cool i love stuff like this and it's nice that it's all in english for uh the people that can't read to different languages so some of his influences he says are brian froud the dark crystal muppets in general um and again you'll see there's a pretty beautiful arthur rackham piece in here it's curious of how they were able to publish it look at this this is great love stuff like this i have so many like art of movies like um disney pixar um all that stuff i love to pick these things up. I really need to go through my book collection and get rid of like half of it so that I have more room for like uh, more books. Because I, I have so much comic stuff um, from working at DC for 16 years or whatever it was. Um, most of that stuff I probably wouldn't revisit except the best of the best. It's nice. This character is really trippy. He looks like a chicken and a dragon and maybe like an imp. And a little bit like um, Squidward. <laughs> it's cool. It's like he's got like a little bit of an eagle vibe there. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, this this trade is really really packed with like awesome shit. I'm hoping I can get a hard copy of it at Comic Con. 
Comic Con's gonna come up fast too, man. We're already in January. July will be here before you know it. That's the crazy thing. I was like, I didn't want to think about it too much because it was already stressing me out. <laughs> but I need to contact them again. Oh, see, this was the Arthur Rackham piece. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't know how they got the rights to publish this unless it's public domain. But Rackham is very influential to tons and tons of people. This was done in 1910. Um, but yeah, Rackham is amazing. All right, so we should be getting back into the book here in one second. These are cool. Love this scribbly line. In your book, where are we? We are in the time of myth. North mythology, nine worlds. I can't pronounce that word. Yagdrazil. I'm going to go with Yagdrazil. Here we go. Okay, so we should be getting back in the book here in a second. It's great that stuff of this quality is produced. These are nice. I was checking out some Marini. Some of these faces reminded me a tiny bit of Marini. Um, but this is a little more um, stylized. But uh, Marini does some good shit. All right, so let's see. Oh man, that's great. It's funny, it almost looks like it has like the crystallized like filter on the strokes. Not 100% sure if this is, it looks traditional. It could be digital too. It's, I don't know, it kind of looks digital. I can't tell on this. It's, it's the pixels of the scan make it tricky to tell. Got a little script, that's always cool. Yes, yeah, so this was originally published in a different language. Their mother tongue, possibly. All right, here we go. How does this read? Oh, look at that. That's cool. Man, that's really neat. I like this cell animation look here. Huh, I wonder... It would be interesting to do a book this way, where you have, like, almost, like, hand... Like, the matte painting backgrounds with this. It would definitely be different. That's really cool. I'm just checking out the snowflakes. <laughs> it looks quite magical, right? Pretty. Oh, look at that. Who is this? This is... Oh, this is him? Man, that's great. It might have been one of the thumbnails. There was a thumbnail that had similar lighting, but I thought that was a room, but I didn't really look at it that closely, but maybe it was this piece. Could have been. It was It was kind of small on a page, but it was kind of like... like it, it read like that as an abstract idea. This is nice, too. Damn. Wow, that's really cool. Oh, so Matthew LaFray. Interesting. I was thinking of Matthew LaFray and Claire Wendling. So he's definitely like, yeah, he's running with this crowd. These were the, Those were the exact artists that I was thinking of in the beginning of the video, though, to be honest. There was a few others. But um, LaFray, I've got his book. I can't think of what it's called right now. It's got like kind of a weird plasticky cover. It's really, really good. I've been a fan of Claire Wendling for, geez, like 23 years now. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, I was definitely getting those vibes. So, a little more background on the story. We're going to get back into the comic in one sec. Here we go. All right. So, man, that is nice. Damn. That is really, really crazy. I love ocean paintings. Wow, that is really cool. Yeah, like I said, I can't... This looks traditional. Oh, man, the colors right here are beautiful. Wow. <laughs> A little more of the influence, inspiration. 
man, that's so nice to have that extra in the um, in the book. So this is back into the storytelling. Again, beautiful colors. Man, this guy is so good. God, this stuff looks great. Look at the watercolor going down or whatever it is. Maybe we'll do like a week of um, stuff that I've never seen. Like, like keep recommending stuff in the comment section. And what I'll do is I'll just grab artists that I don't know. Um, and um, we can check them out. Because that's actually really fun for me. I kind of, you know, like I have to be clear. I never came to YouTube to do like book and artist spotlights. So doing them is is fun. But, but sometimes it's, you know, like... Uh, I need a little help from you guys to get into it. So the recommendations at times are like really, really, really good. Cause then it's like, I'll pick something that I'm, I'm not, um, more like pop, like the possibility of me picking it would be more common. So I prefer to see stuff that I haven't seen, honestly. Uh, it's really cool. This is great, man. Wow, what a great panel. I think the only the only thing that makes this tricky for me in these opening scenes is honestly the lack of faces. It's cool, but but there is a part of me that wishes that I was seeing more faces. Like this helps a little bit, but it definitely is is the reader. It's like I'm not engaging like like the threat isn't super threatening or or the like the majesty of it. And this is just my own like take on it but but it, it definitely is creating a little bit of a disconnect for me i want to be more scared or more impressed and um it's like uh it's not getting me over the hump it's tricky because i i i dealt with this with uh some monster characters in my book where they were actually scarier with no face. I kept trying different faces on them, and it, it always made them not creepy. <laughs> so I'm right there with uh, Alex on this. It's it's challenging to come up with a strategy for some of this stuff. You wouldn't think that it would be, you know, but it, believe it or not, it can be. This is nice. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It's a really interesting concept for a book. Oh, that's nice. He's great at inking too. Man, he draws great, paints great, uh, and inks great. It's funny, it's like, I, I don't know if that's like blue pencil or if it's supposed to be like raindrops. Yeah, I have some of the Claire Wendling graphic novels. I, I need to get them out of my storage, um, and we could shoot them. They're er early in her career, though. I think she hasn't done sequential stories in, like, a long, long time. Probably the late 90s or early, early 2000s. And Lafrey... Oh God, I wish I could remember the name of that freaking art book. I've done a video on Matthew... I've done a couple of videos on Matthew Lafrey. It was another artist I was thinking when we started this was Olivier Vatin, but Vatin might not fall into that exact category, although he may. Yeah, I can definitely see the um, the Dark Crystal uh, kind of Muppet fraud, fraud vibes in here for sure. That's a lot of panels on this page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is nice. It's funny, this face looks a little like how kind of Jimmy Chung draws. Just a tiny bit. Oh, 
that's really, really nice. Damn, the colors on this are great. There's our guy's face. This is a nice panel too, damn. Yeah, this guy is the real deal, man. He can do it all. It's such a great place to be with your art. I can only imagine how nice it must be to be able to have all these skills under your belt. Because I have no idea how to color anything remotely like this. And that's like the missing ingredient for me to move like quite a few steps forward. I feel like I've gotten drawing and inking somewhat down now, but... Yeah, this is like the next <laughs> the next frontier and it's a big one too cuz boy, you can ruin a nice drawing with bad colors. Yeah, this is nice. God, man. His lighting on this is just killer. Absolutely incredible. This is nice too. I don't I don't know if it's the effect that he used, but I think you can put salt table salt like iodized salt and watercolor and it will make these um when it dissolves, it kind of spreads the paint out a little bit or dissolves it a little. It makes it cool look. Yeah, this stuff is all really cool. I know Kelsey was interested in possibly hand coloring something, and uh, maybe this will inspire him more. He's lucky because, oh, here's another one of the spreads. Kelsey can do it all. our creepy cloaked guy oh look at that man that is badass okay so we're gonna start wrapping this up thank you so much for the recommendation i really appreciate it i meant to get your name and i slipped my mind before i started the video but um yeah please like i said if you if you think you've got an ace in the hole and someone that i've never heard of definitely throw it in the comments section and we'll hit it and uh, i'll be really excited to um check check it out so it's it's tricky though I'll, I'll be honest like even for this video i'm struggling a bit to do it because i i don't have a lot of um insight into the artist i don't know the history and it it does make it more difficult for me so i kind of feel like i fumble my way through the video so i apologize if it's clunkier but um you know i guess it's sort of a reaction video in a way so I try to be honest with things. I'm not, you know, like if I'm critical of something, I'm not trying to be nasty about it. It's just just my interpretation of looking at the work and trying to give some sort of um, narrative of what I'm seeing, but doesn't make it right or wrong. So, you know, this is nice. It's one person's opinion on one morning, rainy morning, in fact. Just like this. <laughs> oh, that's nice. All right. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find one banger. We'll end on a banger. This is a nice page, though. I like this. This is nice. God, look at his coloring. That is so cool. This is really nice too. Look at this little bit of magenta he gets in here. Or whatever color it is. Purple, blue. I'm a little colorblind, tiny bit, so some colors shift for me. I didn't know that I was until I was a teenager and I bought clothes one time and then everyone was going like, well, that's like purple one don't normally see one purple i was like is it purple <laughs> I, was kind of like, ah, I guess there's something i am I'm not noticing in my life but it doesn't seem to be too bad i i, I don't even really i honestly don't even really think about it most of the time All right, oh, that's really cool. These are hard shots to do. I had a patron ask about um, 
something not it wasn't like this exact shot i think they were me meaning like a tighter shot but it's it's like uh like how do you draw sand or how do you draw like um branches on trees or like pine needles i think it was pine needles um and a lot of times what you what you ultimately end up doing is it's it's like you want to get the the vibe of it i and i think that this this approach down here is pretty pretty spot on even though again it's not a tight shot but if this was a branch of a tree like this area right here it's the same idea you you you're putting in organic random shapes but the silhouettes need to um sell the idea that it's a pine tree or that it's a specific tree a spruce tree or uh, you know some kind of um i don't know what you call it like a like rubber tree i mean they all they all have different trunks they all have different leaf types um and the way that the the trees grow have different silhouettes like overall so i mean you just have to you really have to be in touch with just about everything so all right i think are we getting towards the end Let's see if there's another spread really quick this is nice I don't want to go too fast and close one. Ah, it's the squad. I love shots like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you eventually you you just you have to have a toolbox where you you have the capabilities to draw whatever, um, and then and then you have the mental uh, sort of rolodex of of design. You can do it. I think you'd be surprised what you actually. Uh, what you in your mind what you um, can visually picture uh, and then like I said as long as you can draw well then it's all kind of the same to be honest if you can move form around in space and light it you're half the more than half the battle is really won at that point all right I'm out of here I got stuff to do I gotta do a review two reviews question and answer for patreon and then i need to finish my blaster kit piece so all right you guys have a great day i love you all thank you so, uh, you know we've only got a few more left let's look at the last few this is only part of the first collection too so definitely get it because i mean uh, uh, there was geez another i think 130 pages just of this first like collected edition it's absolutely insane how much art there is um, and again, he's got five other series. I'll have links to any of his social media that I can find. Um, and uh, yeah, pick this up, check it out. And uh, all right, I'll be back uh, possibly tomorrow uh, with uh, one of your recommendations. So fire away and I'll talk to you later. Thanks and happy new year. Bye.